going to talk about the UI kit, uh, UI collection views. So, how many of you use UI collection views? I saw everyone, I think. Yeah, so, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, so, agenda is introduction. Uh, uh, legal advice of using, uh, stop using UI table views. And understanding collection views, low layout basics. And creating a basic and advanced simple using Flowdown and the homework, which you can do your help. So basically my group I work at Equinix as an iOS developer and also I do server-side programming as well. But I have a product value as well experience into programming. And if you want to get in touch, you can get in touch with me on GitHub. It's github.com slash as a venue. So yeah. So why this statement stop using UI table view? Because UI table view goes very, the roots of UI table view goes very back into the, when the programming started in the iOS world. So the API was made like there was uh, all kind of linear layouts at a time, so they developed like this. So right now, maybe I can say it's not a scalable solution for your apps. So I think all if you are going to write some app today, I think you can better be using UI collection view instead of UI table views because it gives all the features which are there in the UI table views. So if someone comes and gives you some linear layout, don't use UI table views, just go for UI collection views. And one of the main reasons is, one other reason is if you have to scale to the tab version, so all the time, sometimes the linear layout may not look good. So you might want to break the prints for iPhone and for other kind of stuff. Okay, so so what we are going to we are going to progress in some stages. I will be demoing the code and we will move into some stages from basic to little uh, level one and then level two which will be a fully custom advanced layout which which will be sort of a Pinterest which you, you have might have used. So we will at the last we will be building that kind of layout, but we will be starting with the App Store clone. Everybody might have used the iOS App Store clone, which is iOS 11 App Store, how the layout comes. So, yeah, I'll switch to the... like this. So the first step will be we will be creating using this using a flow layout, UI collection flow layout. So how very quickly I'll go what is a UI collection with flow layout. So, so flow layout is actually basically a line based layout. Line based means so line based means you will have a line linear kind of layout. You cannot have a custom layout. So like libraries will be like this one, two and then three, four, five. You cannot have like the just width according to your own style. So if the width, width finishes, the next item goes here automatically. And so like item 5, the width is finished, it automatically goes to the item 6 based on the scrolling direction. So when it is a vertical scroll direction, so if item 0, 1, 2 and there is no space, it will just go directly here to 3, then 4, 5 and then 6 and then it goes uh, vertically you can scroll. Okay, so, okay, so, so I have a code ready, so I will be going through some, how I, I have designed this one, this layout, this using collection views. So the end result will be like this, so we will go some line by line to understand how it's been uh, using collection view. And so, uh, and sorry, there will be no storyboards, so all is written in the script file. Okay, so yeah. So starting from line number 14, everybody can see. So we are just created one collection view and giving it a frame of zero and we are passing the flow layout. So it's kind of like UI collection view and then 
just passing the empty frame right now. So I'm going to set up the frame using one or else later. But right now I'm just passing the layout object as a collection will flow layout. So all the collection will should have some layout, which is the backing, which gives the items where it has to render and where it has not to be. So currently we are using the out of box flow layout, which is very diverse. So we are going to use it. And so next time very simple. You will load and just send the title and that's the next one I am configuring the collection view. So here I'm just adding a sub view which is the view I created in the first line order 6. So you understand I'm registering a cell so that we will be using that UI collection in the cell. And background color I'm setting as a white and here I'm putting some constraints like Collection view, top anchor, constraint equals to top anchor, bottom anchor, railing anchor, and so these are basically auto layouts created using code. So I'm just uh, putting the collection view top to bottom from the left corner, from top, left, right, bottom, everything. I'm putting 0, 0, 0. So the collection view is this out like this using the auto layout constraint. So, so one thing I'll be coming back is so here, so the collection view dot delegate equal to cell like we do in the table views. So I'm setting the delegate method so that we can have a collection view setup. So the number of sections, how many sections I want. So right now I have only one section. And for number of items, how many items you want to show. So currently we are showing the three items. So as you can see, here, one, two, and Three items we have, which are vertically scrollable. So by default, the scroll direction of the flow layout is a vertical. So if you don't give any scrolling direction, so it will just scroll like this. Okay. So I created one cell, which is image view card cell, which is this kind of this cell. So this. So the first one cell, which I have created cell below which we are going through. So I have three types, three cells because I have written in three items. So then the main part is how the layout works is so currently we are using flow layout. So flow layout provides one uh, delegate method, so which is like the size for item at the index bar. So which 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 asks the layout how how much the size will be of that index bar. We can every index for should be the size of the cell. So what I am doing because currently we have currently you see we have full almost close to full width and some height. So we need a way to give it to expand it to custom full height and height will be passing some number right now. So what I am doing is so for size for item at path so it takes the C size. So width I am passing as the frame dot size dot width minus 40 and height I am passing as 400. So every item, every cell will be of this width and height. So width is the full frame width I am taking 40 minus 40 and the height will be 400. So as you can see all, all are height of 400 and the width is almost 40. Just to go to the cell, in the cell, and this one, as we discussed on our top, so we have image view card cell. So every cell has to sub, uh, has to inherit from the UI connection view cell, then only you can pass those cells to the UI connection view. So I am doing nothing here, I am setting the card view, which is having the corner ID sub 10, uh, master one 2 is user interaction, and some image I put, I hard put images, card, image card, image file. But you can change from, you can fetch from the network and everything. So all the standard labels I have put here. So add description label, metadata label, and the setup sub views. So I am adding a constraint on the label. So yeah. So and then it looks like this. So what what's going on is the floor layout. The size for index as path we are passing as a width dot minus 40 so it becomes so wide and the height uh, we have already have 400 
And in the image view cell, we are having a photo card with a corner radius of 10. And uh, some labels we are putting some button and images, some static image I have. So, so this this kind of layout, then just like this. So now to understand a bit more, so we are going to change something here. Yeah. So let me try to put some integer cells. Okay, so understand what is minimum line spacing. So what is the minimum line spacing? So as you can see, right? Currently I can see this much width, right? Between the two. And actually this not a bit, I put the insects in the constraints, so it looks like this. So if somebody asks, okay, can we do this without touching the collection yourself? Yeah, you can do this. So we can just So if you see the minimum item line spacing, so if you if you go back to the, our original side, so this one is the minimum line spacing. So but in diagram you will see many items because I have five six items in one line. But right now we have one. So minimum line spacing is actually this space, which should be minimum says minimum. If you give fifty, it's it's not necessary to be fifty, but minimum says at least. It has to be 50, the iOS system will decide how much it has to do, but minimum is a minimum, it has to be so much. So the spacing between the items is a minimum. Spacing. So now it looks like this. So so now what so what I'm going to do is so if image index I'm putting I'm going to put some more one index equal to two. So I'm going to roll back to zero. And so what I'm doing. So let's see. So understanding of nine nine items and is and the scrolling direction is very important when you are developing relation to flow jobs. So if you see, if you see, I put a, uh, this one more image, which is like this one. So if you remember, I put that index number two. So if you see now, the index number zero, it goes like here: one, two, three, four, five, six. So the scrolling direction is very important. You should take care in which scrolling direction you have. So now it scrolls in a horizontal direction instead of a vertical. So so now suddenly the manager comes and says, "Oh no, this layout is not good." I want to wait. So if you have UI table, you just put oh my So what direction is the friend? So what I do is just right? Let's try. Oh, see. 
just in one line change we have 2 by 2 and we can just reduce the height so it looks good. So we have a grid view in just one line change of code. So you just need to go to size for item and index path and change the width of each cell. Now if you carefully see we have uh, width divided by 2 minus 40. You can change the math to suit your needs and I200. So but if we had if we had used UI table use, can just go inside each each table cell and create two more cards and everything but if you have this one it's easy and another UI correction we provides animation out of box so I'm not I don't have today much time to go through it but so we just can create a layout like this. So yeah so okay so okay this one is another kind of layout which we is possible using UI correction views. So what this layout is, it's called in both directions, horizontal vertically and horizontally. So if you have seen the iOS app store, it's kind of it kind of does the same thing, it scrolls in both directions. Like some section will scroll in the horizontal some and the main collection view will scroll in the vertical direction. So you can see so that is Scrolling, main is crawling in the horizontal and this one so nice, nicely in the horizontal direction. So the code is also simple. So don't be afraid of using selection music even if you're beginning the iOS programming. I have seen many people will be afraid of using beginners will be afraid of using selection views, but they are damn simple and simple as UI table use. So the code for this is almost similar. So I'm again going to use a UI correction view flow layout. So similar, the main correction view will be edge to edge. So and the scrolling direction will be vertical. So the main connection just calls in the vertical direction. So only catch is here. In so so we are going to create a two different kind of cells. One will be this cell which is having image and the second cell will be holding another collection view which crawls in the horizontal direction. So this one is a very standard stuff we discussed, configuring cell view, add cell view. So yeah. So I have a number of items as as 10. So if you see carefully here, index path by 2 equal to 0, what I am doing is uh, image you got, I am registering two cells, means I am getting two cells now. If it's a, it's, if modular of 2 is 0, I am entering image you card and if it's not, I am using a, entering a feature cell card, feature cell sorry. So image you card is a, the one which we have used previously, which is that top one. So if you see at the 0 and here, and if you see the all modular by 2 location, you will find the same which we had in previous, but here now we are doing a separate thing. So here what we are doing is we are having a feature set. So if you, if you see the feature set, it's a subclass of UI connection to set, but here I am implementing a flow layout delegate also. So what I am doing is in the I am getting one more collection view inside a cell and I am adding it to the uh, this UI table view cell. If you see here cell dot content view that adds some view, collection view. And inside that connection view, I have scroll direction as horizontal, so it scrolls in the horizontal direction. So, so the catch is simple. We just need to have two kind of cells: one which one which have nested collection views, and what is which is a simple card we have. So we can give the number of items. So here we have number section one, and in each cell, I have number of cells is seven. So you can pass the the model from the outside, but right now just everything is hard coded. So, so this one, so if you see the size, I am turning as a grid and height as a 
R to the 200, so it shows like this. Okay. So, any question? Okay. So, so this is pretty. I think most of 90, 80 percent apps, collection use flow never works. But sometimes there will be some use case where it will not be nine based. Means it will be. If you use printer stack, you will see one item is very high, one is small. So if you use nine based layout, it will the biggest item will be the nine height. So suppose one is a having so suppose this is item A and this item seven, if it's a nine based layout, so it will go like nine to nine. The other item will come here and here. So it will look very ugly. This space will be blank and it looks very ugly. So for that kind of stuff we need advanced. We need to subclass the UI collection view layout. So those are classes called as custom collection view layouts. So, so those are the little tricky in implementing, but once you get a hold of them, that's a very easy. So only only thing is it's a basic simple thing. So collection view there will be some kind of Prepare layout method will be called in which you have to give the layout of all the cells and the collection is content size. So what happens is if you are going to use your own layout, you cannot use the collection view uh, content size methods. We have to return the content size for the collection view, like how long it has to be and how wide it has to be. And so uh, layout attributes for element means uh, where the elements are there in the rectangle. So this is a bit little, so I'll show a demo then it will be more easy. I'll share the code at the end of session, maybe explaining might not be so easy right now, but you can just see how it looks like, okay. So you can see. So if you can see here, if it's a nine days layout, this first and second. So, so the third item will come from here and here. So if this place looks uh, very ugly, so this kind of two column grid layout you cannot make with the normal flow layouts. So you have to uh, use a so I quickly go through the time.
and the second one will be some width will be divided by two and this offset so x position is very simple so we for all items we can pretty quickly calculate the x position and what will be the y position will be the previous y position top plus i plus offset so like this way we have to calculate all the individual y positions and the uh, and as I told, we have to calculate the content size itself. So the width is uh, pretty obvious because we are uh, scrolling in the vertical direction. So the width will be only this much, content size, and the height will be the all sum of you can say all the heights of this uh, cells. So yeah, means uh, it's basically uh, first time it will be difficult to make understand. But I'll be sharing the code and maybe you can go through how to uh, create these two column layouts more easily. Only, and if you see, it's not a complex because because. So if you see in just 86 lines of code, we are creating this layout. So it's not a complex, we just have to go to the methods, uh, what does method, what these methods do, like layout attributes for element and rect. What is what it shows, what it says is if the system is going to give you rect. So we have to see whether which attributes lie on this rectangle. So we have to return like, those elements and then just we have to return those elements. That means it just Four five methods you have, and you, in just sixty lines of code, in eighty lines of code you have that printer's kind of layout, and everything else remains same, no changes. Yeah. So, yeah, any questions? Yeah. Well, actually, for example, <coughs> when you see what the self finding, self finding. Yeah. When you say that one medium, one medium to another medium, and you say that the managing the expectation. So I'm curious if you ever faced this kind of problem before. With UIW, you 
can manually make it non-asynchronous by setting the estimated row height itself. Yeah. Now what? That's kind of issue in our case. In our case, okay. yes, yeah. Maybe the, but since uh, my point is like, so all the apps which we if you go to all the apps like right, Instagram, Facebook, so all of them has this thing removed. They will use. So everyone is using collection use. And I recommend using ideal list fit. So which is uh, Instagram powered collection use. So it makes the development very easy. So everyone can use ideal list fit. Uh, thanks everyone.